Will simply throwing money at the homeless crisis in California make it go away? Let's find out. To stabilize people, we need to deal with the underlying reasons they're out on the streets and sidewalks in the first place. The reason they're self-medicating with drug or alcohol addictions, with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia uh, and other challenges that so many people face. Okay. Hopefully Gavin Newsom puts the money to good use, a.k.a. throwing all the homeless people in mental institutions because that's where they need to be because they are negatively impacting every single person and citizen in California. Why do I have to walk over needles? Why can't my kids play basketball on the sidewalk? You know, we don't deserve that. You're affecting society as a whole, and you need to be institutionalized to get better. California narrowly passing a measure aimed at fighting the state's homeless crisis. It's called Proposition 1, and it approved a $6 billion bond to build more mental health and addiction treatment centers. Under Governor Gavin Newsom, the state has spent about $22 billion total on the homeless crisis. But critics say none of the spending seems to be completely working because the number of Californians have ballooned to 181,000. California Republican Congressman Darrell Issa joins us now on the very latest on this. Uh, Congressman, your reaction to the passage of this uh, bill by the voters, uh, what do you think of this uh, referendum? You know, look, you can't keep throwing money at, uh, at the symptoms. That $22 billion that uh, the governor spent, he spent that basically buying hotel rooms to put people in for a night, two nights, ten nights. Uh, more than a decade ago, they raised the tax on every single high-income Californian by additional 1%, specifically to fight mental illness. That money has never been properly used for exactly that. The reason people are on fentanyl is they have disorders. The people who are on fentanyl, if they didn't have disorders, have them. When we look at what is going on, why most people are, are homeless, this it's actually drug and alcohol abuse. So fixing it requires that they spend the money that they extracted from taxpayers properly, and they haven't done that. You cannot get rid of homelessness simply by giving somebody a hotel room for the night. You've got to cure the drivers of this homelessness. By the way, your earlier segment, which was all about uh, uh, that theft, those organized theft rings pr very much prey on the fact that they can give a couple of hundred dollars for a couple thousand dollars worth of goods uh, that have been stolen under our weak Prop 47 law, and that's feeding the, the fentanyl purchasing. Hmm. So what do you think the main driver of this, and when you talk about mental health, has it, has it been COVID? Is it the fact that people live in the margins? Is it the other issues of addiction, as you just said, and mental health? It's mental health, including addiction. Look, there are a great many of us who have a propensity to, to do things to excess, to eat to excess, to drink to excess, et cetera. Yeah, it's mental health, but it's also our terrible border policy where shit tons of South Americans and Central Americans can bring in as many drugs as they want. Anyone caught trafficking massive amounts of fentanyl? Give them the chair. Because they're going to kill. If they didn't get caught, they would have killed a lot of people. So give them the electric chair. Also, make the cartels a military target. Fuck the cartels. I hate the cartels. Have you ever seen their videos online, their torture videos? They are barbarians. Make them a military target. Fuck them. If you successfully fight it, you're not an alcoholic, you're not a drug user. If you don't successfully do it, if you succumb to it, you become that, that description, uh, a drug addict or an alcoholic. The fact is it can be treated, we can help many people, but that help is not a hotel room, that help is real therapy. We're in a state where you can't incarcerate, incarcerate anyone unless they want to be incarcerated. And as soon as they get a little sober, they typically check themselves out and go back and score. He's 100% right about that. It's really up to the individual to get sober. No one's going to do it for them. Most people do sober up and then they go out and score and then they repeat the whole entire process. That's the thing where the state can come in. Once they go and score and they get caught, handcuff them. Send them to an institution and just keep keep sending them, keep sending them until they learn the lesson. So this is the reason that we do have nearly 200,000 uh, additional homeless uh, nests in, in my district and uh, some of our 
uh, law enforcement, our mayors like uh, John Franklin, they've actually gone to uh, organized bust, going to the effort to prove that it's not $900, it's $900 nine times a day. Mm. And they've been able to get some of these people help because once they've got a felony facing them and they're given a choice of go to real therapy and get clean and dry or go to jail, they pick a, a more serious solution. Mm. Uh, but look, it's going to take tough love. Decades ago, Rudy Giuliani cleaned up New York. He didn't do it by being nice. He did it by doing what would actually fix the problem. We need to do the same thing in California. Why is it? I disagree. I actually think it's very nice. It's nice to all the people and the taxpayers that have to deal with the homeless people. I think it's very nice for 90% of the population. I don't know why we have to be super nice to probably 1% or 2% of the population. I think we need to make the homeless people a military target as well. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. In the long run, it's actually the nice thing to do for not only the homeless people, but the citizens of California as well. There are some ask a, a, a Marshall Plan for mental health. We see in New York, for example, an increase in other cities across the country, as opposed to the short-term band-aids, as you point out, the hotel room for the night, helping the people that way. More programs, more therapy, hospitalization, and this sort of thing. Well, the reality is that some of it goes back to court decisions that said, basically, if someone isn't a immediate threat to themselves or others, that you can't keep them. But you have to keep people long enough to get them uh, in a condition where they can decide to stay dry, to say stay sober. Uh, but you're right about the Marshall Plan, except remember, this is a Marshall Plan that has to be catered to each individual. You can't treat a group like you would just a group of hungry people feeding them. Each one of these people has to be addressed personally and, and kept in real supervised situation until they, in fact, can, in fact, maintain sobriety on their own. It doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to do it multiple times. But right now, we're not doing it. Right now, we're housing people, not, in fact, curing people. So many people do need help. And if they get that appropriate help they need, they can be pulled back from the margins and saved. Congressman Darrell Issa, always good to see you. Congressman, thank you for your insight today. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Thanks Harris. Harris. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.